so one of the interesting things that I've discovered here in Miami, in Miami Beach, is, is you know, a lot of people basically say, well, okay, we know that Miami's in trouble. Studies about sea level rise are pretty straightforward, that with three or four feet of sea level rise, Miami as we know it today is not going to exist. Um, and yet the building here is going on in the same, you know, at, at, a, at a record rate. They're continuing to build high rises all along the beach. Basically nothing has changed. For the next few decades we're probably talking, you know, a foot, maybe two feet. By the end of the century, is it three, four, five feet? We're in a coastal property bubble. It is going to crash, guaranteed. There is uh, $1.2 trillion in flood insurance provided courtesy of all the taxpayers. When you start to look at the geology of, uh, of uh, South Florida, you know, most of it is below six feet. It's just a big flat limestone pancake. And the next time a category, you know, a Sandy or Katrina hits Miami, it's $100 billion in insured losses, multiple bankruptcies, the state declares bankruptcy. You and I, we're all going to bail them out. Eventually, Congress, I don't know how many bailouts there will be, but they won't go on forever, and then we will pull the plug. And we're not going to keep paying people to live in places that are going to get worse and worse storm surges over time. What really concerns me on this is that the ice did not get the memo to stop melting in the year 2100. As I understand the science, at even a two degree Celsius uh, temperature limit, which is, although not the high ambition target, is more ambitious than what we all have collectively signed up to at Paris, that puts us in the order of when the ice finally stabilized, order 15 feet, one five feet of sea level rise. Most difficult of all is it's built on a kind of porous limestone plateau. It's like built on a big sponge. A city like New York or, or um, cities in Europe like Rotterdam and others where they can build levees and keep water away, you can't really build walls to keep water away here in South Florida because the water will just go right underneath it. Let's say if we don't get serious, four degrees Celsius, 30 feet, 10 meters of sea level rise. Uh, 10 meters of sea level rise, Orlando becomes beachfront property. Over here you can see that some of the seawall is underwater uh, here. And you can look at the bridge there, the causeway going across and see how high the water is up to the roadway there. Um, these causeways are a big issue, a big problem because with basically one, one and a half, one foot to one and a half foot of sea level rise, all of the causeways connecting Miami Beach to Miami itself to the mainland go underwater uh, and that's a big big problem obviously in the long run. Even when there was two and three feet of water in this area it didn't come pouring over these seawalls here that we're standing on. Um, there was some water on them but most of the water came up through the um, drainage, the wastewater drainage pipes and bubbled up that way and came up th essentially through the sewer system and through um, the, the manhole covers and stuff on the, uh, on the streets. And you can still see that today. I know that people are reporting that um, today in various parts of Miami Beach. Nobody wants to talk about the complexities of the future and of problems. It's not part of the kind of culture here. It's a sort of a, a place where you go to get away from problems, to have uh, fun on the beach, to have drinks, to go out. It's, the, it's this sort of resort culture that is not good at dealing with, like, real-life complicated problems. This is just the beginning. Right. We need to learn how to work together. Uh, right. I mean, you see? It's flooded. Yeah, you see? I know. Yeah, okay. yeah. And um, so, if we had... Now, when things are not so complicated, we try to kill each other, well, we are going to kill each other in the future because we are going to have all kind of excuses to fight. God, I was going to get in here. I have to wash my car. You have to wash your car in case of salt water? Oh, yeah. 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 I went out with a scientist into a, a low-income neighborhood um, in Shorecrest, uh, just, uh, just uh, at the edge of, uh, just across the causeway from Miami Beach in, in Miami the city of Miami, and we saw a low-income neighborhood uh, completely flooded out with two or three feet of water through the, through the uh, streets. Uh, and this is an area where um, there are in-ground septic tanks, uh, there's um, 
real evidence that this water is very polluted. Um, the scientist I was with was doing some sampling of it to, uh, to see how, how, what those levels of bacteria and other things are. That's sea level rise. Well, not sea level rise, that's uh, kin tide. Well, but that's connected to sea level rise, obviously. That, uh, yeah. And this is what sea level rise is going to look like. Yeah, that's why my experiment is called uh, a, a glimpse into the future normal. Right. Wow. Wow. Whoa. Hey, this is unbelievable. <laughs> yeah. This is unbelievable. Look at that. Oh. That's 71st. <laughs> oh my God, look at this. Unbelievable. I was talking to some ladies here yesterday, talking about this. Do you know that they had this problem for the last three months? Not that much, but they have had problems of this. Every time they have some kind of high tide or too much wind, they have this. But you've never seen anybody from the city here to help you or to explain this to you? No. Not me. I don't know the other neighbor. So this is the Miami sea level rise story in a nutshell. We have this low-lying neighborhood here, flooding out dramatically already with king tides. It's only going to get worse. This water is polluted from all of the in-ground septic systems around here. This is, as the scientists we've just been, been talking with said, a public health hazard. This is, you know, uh, so who would build here? Well, look. This is what's going on. We have a teardown. There was obviously another house here, a smaller house in this low-income neighborhood. They were building a big house right here in the middle of this, one of the worst flood zones in Miami. So, I mean, this is sort of, you know, the problem in a nutshell. Nothing is changing. Yes, this, if you look closely, you can see the house is elevated a little bit, but an elevated house doesn't help if you can't drive down the street to get to your house. An elevated doesn't help if your kids go outside and play in polluted water and get diseases or, you know, or, or infections from the pollution of, from, the, from the bacteria in the water. I mean, this kind of um, completely sort of silo thinking, completely sort of, you know, is this a, a cheap piece of real estate and how big a house can I put there? That's with the, the Miami development story in a nutshell.